everyone. Welcome to Wild Voices Online. We'll get started in just a few moments. Uh, while we're waiting for people to join us, I have a question for you to answer for today. Because our theme is going to be about wildlife safety and bear safety is going to be a bigger part of that, I have a question of, have you ever seen a wild bear? Um, so not a bear on TV or not a bear um, somewhere else that's not a wild bear, but a bear like in the woods, in the wild. Uh, have you seen a black bear, a grizzly bear, or have you not seen any bears? You can let me know. And if you've actually seen both a black bear and a grizzly bear, you can select both of them today if you want. Okay, uh, welcome for those who have just joined us. While we're waiting for people to log in, I have a question up there that you can answer. Of, have you ever seen a wild bear? So a bear that's actually out in the woods or the wild somewhere. Have you ever seen a black bear, a grizzly bear, or maybe you haven't seen any bears? Okay, great, I'll give it a few more moments before we get started. So if you haven't answered our question for today, go ahead and do that now. I will give it um, five more seconds from here. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's see what you said. So um, most people said that they have seen a bear before. Most people have seen a black bear. That makes sense. Black bears tend to end up often where humans are. We'll find more about that. Uh, we'll find out more about that soon. Um, some people have seen a grizzly bear too, and some people haven't seen any bears. Well, we will get started for today. My name is Christine. I work for the Columbia Basin Environmental Education Network. We've been doing um, these Wild Voices Online programs in May and June. This is actually our last one of the series but we've been putting up all the recordings on cping.ca slash wild voices online. So if you missed a presentation or you want to watch one again, you can go to cping.ca slash wild voices online and a recording of all the sessions is there. So for how this presentation will work, you are muted, which means we can't see or hear you. So if you want to ask a question, you can click the little speech bubble on your screen. It looks like this and you can type a question to us. And your questions will only be seen by myself and today's presenter. And I'll ask your questions for you when we get to a good pause point where our presenter is ready to take some questions. Um, but please be patient with your questions. Just send them one time. I promise I'll have seen it, but just like when you're in your classroom and lots of people have questions, we might not have time to answer all of them, but we'll do our best to answer lots of them when we have a moment. Okay, and then just before we start, a quick question of what grade you are in. If you can let us know what grade you're in, that would be great. Are you in kindergarten, grade one, two, three, four, five, six, grade seven and up? You can let us know. Okay, I'll give it five more seconds from here for you to let us know if you haven't already. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. It uh, looks like mostly grade four and five um, today for the grades that um, students are who are joining us, but there's someone from every grade today. So welcome everyone. We will get started. Today we're going to be doing the Wild Safe BC Ranger program. It's going to be about uh, wildlife safety and Kathy, Mer Kathy Murray is joining us from the Wild Safe BC program. So I'm going to pass it over to Kathy now to get started. Hi, uh, good morning everyone. So I'm Kathy and I've been employed by the BC Conservation Foundation uh, for almost 15 years now. So what I do is I go around and I talk to different people throughout the community about wildlife awareness and wildlife safety. And I'd really like to say a big thank you to the uh, to Seabean and Wild Voices for inviting us uh, on the program this morning. And I also also would like to acknowledge that we are on Tanaha traditional territory today. Um, so I'm, we're going to be talking about the Junior Ranger program. So I'm just going to um, put up my slideshow. 
So firstly, um, so the Ranger program, it's all about keeping wildlife wild and communities safe. Uh, oops, I'm sorry about that. I'll go back to my slideshow. So we're going to talk about firstly, what is a wild, a wild safe ranger? Um, we're going to learn about local wildlife, some of the animals we've seen in the area. I live in Fernie, and I think some of you live uh, throughout the Columbia Basin. And just here in Fernie, in the last couple of weeks, we've seen black bears, grizzly bears, moose, moose with calves. We even saw a wolf out on the, uh, by the rifle range, which is really rare. And we've had quite a few skulls around. Um, we're also going to talk about things that, um, that cause problems between people and wildlife and what we can do to resolve those issues. We're also going to talk about wildlife safety. So a lot of us this summer are going to be going hiking and biking and camping. So we really need to know what to do if we do see a bear, a moose, even a cougar. And then finally, we're going to wrap up with the wild safe ranger oath. Okay, so the different animals that we can see. So you'll see up here in my left is the black bear. So we have lots of black bears in the area. And you can recognize the black bear because you'll see he's got the long pointy ears, a light colored muzzle. And we know that black bears are not always black. They can be different shades. They can be brown, blonde, or even white. And often we get phone calls about people calling in and they see a brown colored black bear. And right away, they think it's a grizzly bear, but just remember that black bears can also be brown. Uh, we also see lots of deer in the area. And we have more and more deer in our communities. And uh, we should remember that also deer are prey for cougars. So if we are attracting deer into our community and providing food to them, we could be in turn attracting cougars. Hey, Kathy, just jumping in, um, do you want to press um, present from current slide? Um, you're not in uh, full screen right now. Oh, okay. Thank you. Let me present. Oh, from the beginning. Oh, okay. Right. Thank you. <laughs> okay, here that's better. Okay, and here I will see this is a grizzly bear. So you can see the grizzly bear is a lot larger. He's got a wide, like a broad face smaller rounded ears. That's one really good way to tell black bears and grizzly bears apart is by the shape of the ears. Also on the left here, uh, we have a cougar. Um, again, you know, cougars are, um, you know, they're spot and stalk hunters and they're most active from dusk till dawn. So that's at night. So you're probably not likely to see a cougar, but they have probably seen you. And also here we have the coyote which uh, we've seen quite a few coyotes around the area. We can also often hear them howling at night. And here to the right um, is a wolf. And again, uh, just last week in Fernie, we were driving up Cole Creek Road and we saw a wolf just past the rifle range. Very special experience. So we're gonna talk a little bit about, um, you know, why we have so many wild animals in Fernie. Um, and in the, you know, throughout the Columbia Basin is we have excellent habitat and animals, they need four things to survive. Uh, and we have, you know, um, so that's food, lots of great quality food, of course, water, you know, rivers and lakes, um, shelter, um, animals will take shelter in different places. For example, black bears love to go into like old cedar trees and grizzly bears sometimes in the alpine like to hide under rocks or even in snow. And of course, all animals need lots of space. So together, these four things, food, water, shelter, and space make up habitat. Now in the wilderness, again, we're gonna talk a little bit about wild food. So we'll start here on the bottom left-hand side. There's lots of greenery. So in the spring, like bears love to feed on all the emerging greenery, anything that's nice and fresh and it's very high in, in protein and in fiber. And this year we had a really cold, wet spring. So that means that the animals were kind of pushed to the valley bottoms to find fresh greenery and food. And that's why throughout the province of British Columbia, we had 
a lot of bears lowered in altitude and coming into our towns. Bears will also eat berries. So um, we have lots and lots of berries here in the Elk Valley and surrounding uh, communities. And in the summer, higher in altitude, bears will eat huckleberries and also lots of Saskatoon berries, which are lower in altitude. And did any, I don't know if you know, but bears can eat up to 100,000 berries in a day. That's a lot of berries. I don't know who counted, but those are the statistics. They also, uh, grizzly bears especially, will dig up for in insects, so lots of insects. And if you're walking around on a trail and you see some diggings, it might be that a grizzly bear that's been there digging for food. And they will also often feed on smaller animals, uh, you know, such as deer or sometimes grizzly bears will even feed on, you know, smaller black bear cubs. Now also, we'll find that, you know, animals can find all these foods in our communities as well. So they can find often, you know, unnatural foods. Those are foods that are natural, that bears don't normally eat or other animals. That's something that we've placed there. And again, um, you know, one thing that's very common is of course garbage. So we can see these dumpsters here that have been left open. So that's like an enormous, you know, buffet of food for bears. So it's really important that we make sure that the dumpsters are keep, kept closed. And if we have a garbage can at home, it's really important that we put it inside a garage or a shed. Because if we just leave it outdoors, bears have a great sense of smell and they might find it in your backyard. And imagine if you're in your house and you have your garbage can on your porch right next to your door and you step outside at night to let your dog out. What do you think is going to happen if you step out and you get be between a bear eating garbage in your garbage can and you step out and surprise it at close range? It could react defensively because we should always remember that animals and bears, they will defend three things, their food, their space, and their young. Something else that we'll find in our communities are um, fruit. Um, lots of apple trees. So especially uh, come the fall when the apples are ripe, that will bring the bears in. And a lot of people think, you know, that apples are a good, healthy, natural food for bears. Well, it is a good food, but the problem is the apple tree is in your backyard. So if you have an apple tree with apples on the ground, rotting on the ground, the bear comes to the backyard, gets into the apple tree, he may end up wandering up onto your porch, close to your home, getting between you and a, you or your, you know, your family or your pets. And that, again, could cause a problem. And another thing is um, pet food. So we have pet food. So if you know that there are bears in the area, it is best to keep the pet food indoors, especially at night. So basically, these unnatural foods that we've placed, um, we call them the wildlife attractants. And they are the main reason that wildlife come into our towns. So again, we'll see in the top left-hand corner, we have our garbage can that's left outside between collection dates, the open dumpsters, even compost, pet food, and apples. So maybe when we're done the presentation today, if you take a little walk around your property and try and see if there's any of those things that might attract bears into your home, or if there's anything else, if you can think of other attractants. I know in the summer, I love having a barbecue. And, uh, you know, barbecues are, they, you can smell them from far, far away. And remember that bears have a great sense of smell. You can see the black bear's really big nose cavity, right? He can smell food from far, far away. There's an old Indian legend that says, when a leaf falls in the forest, so imagine a falling leaf, the eagle saw it, the coyote heard it, and the bear smelled it. Imagine having a sense of smell so great that you can smell a leaf falling in the forest. So again, if we have things that attract wildlife in our backyard or in a neighborhood, you know, we will have bringing animals in and that could cause a problem, you know, between the people and the animals. 
So we'll talk about a few scenarios where there are problems between people and wildlife. So occasions where wildlife is a negative impact on people. So an example could be right here, like a bear causing damage um, to a shed. And another example where people negatively impact wildlife, if we look in the, on the left corner, you can see a deer and you can see a car. So for example, uh, a deer getting hit by a car in town. Here on the right, we can see the bear, the, the black bear with a, you know, carrying a bag of garbage just up, you know, up the, up the driveway there. And bears, it's very interesting because I was talking to someone yesterday in Fernie and they had a whole bunch of garbage scattered around their backyard. It wasn't from their garbage can. It was actually from the people down the street. They had left their garbage can outside. They actually had a garage, but they had forgotten to put the garbage in. The bear got into the garbage, grabbed the bag of garbage, and he dragged it around to the neighbor's yard and up in the back and the garbage was scattered all around. So it's, uh, it's really important for everyone to keep their garbage indoors. And that means if we all have our garbage uh, inside the house, we clean up our fruit trees, the bears are going to pass through town like they always have. But if they find no food or don't easily reward in town, they're just going to move back into the wilderness and feed on natural food. Now, another thing that attracts bear, you can see here this bird feeder. You can see this um, black bear cell and her cub. Now she has learned that there's a whole bunch of great food in this bird feeder. Uh, the average bird feeder will contain almost 10,000 calories. So now a bear can eat 30,000 calories in a day. So if you imagine this black bear teaching her cub to get 10,000 calories from the bird feeder, that is a really huge amount of food. So do you think that that black bear and cub are going to go back to the wilderness to hunt for 100,000 berries in a day? Probably not. And it's unfortunate that on occasion, if there is a problem between people and wildlife, so basically, um, you know, bears have you know, broken into a house, they've chased a pet, um, a child, or there's a, there's a threat to human safety, the bear has to be removed. So some of you may have seen the bear traps in town. Now, again, removing the bear doesn't solve the problem because if the food, the garbage and the attractants are still there, other bears are going to come in. So again, it's entirely up to us to resolve that issue. So if we make sure that we teach our families, our friends and our neighbors to keep garbage and attractants away from bears, the end result is going to be a cleaner and a safer community for everyone. And everything that we do has, you know, really makes a difference. And again, you know, we talked about uh, issues, you know, wildlife uh, coming into conflict with people. But again, you know, there is a lot that we can do. And just to summarize again, you know, keep the garbage indoors or in a bear resistant garbage can. You can see this can here. This is what we call a bear resistant garbage can. It's not bear proof, nothing is, but it's designed to make it more difficult for the bear to get into the can. So it's surrounded, it's got, it's reinforced with metal. And it's got these, it's got clasps on the top. So it makes it really difficult for the bear to get into it. Um, and also just remembering to pick all of our fruit, bring in bird feeders. Um, you know, if we have compost, it's a big responsibility. We need to be careful with it. And if we have chicken coops or livestock, it's always a really good idea to protect it with an electric fence. Um, so again, if we all work together to manage the attractants, so that's garbage, bears, compost, the end result will be wildlife will stay wild and our communities are going to stay safe. Now we're going to talk a little bit about bear safety. Now, of course, you know, I think, you know, I go out hiking and mountain biking two, three times a week. Um, I go out and work with, uh, with a lot of the, uh, the black bear and grizzly bear biologists. I work with the conservation officers. I've seen a lot of bears and, um, you know, I feel that, you know, we need to understand bear, bear behavior so that we can prevent problems in the first place. So when we choose to go hiking or mountain biking, there's a number of things that we can do to make sure that we don't um, 
have an encounter with wildlife. The safest encounter is the one that we can avoid. So firstly, um, avoiding bear encounters. You know, you don't want to walk alone. You always want to hike in a group. Now, of course, uh, right now with the physical distancing, we need to make sure that we stay apart, but we always walk together. Now, um, as you're walking, make noise to warn animals of your presence. So especially if you call out, you know, bears will recognize the human voice and they typically don't really want anything um, to do with us. And also by using your, vo your human voice and calling out, you're letting the bear know that you are human and not prey. Now, sometimes people ask about bear bells. Now, bear bells are really not very loud, especially if you're in an area where there's lots of bush and shrubs and a river. As soon as uh, you can experiment, have someone carry a bear bell, and as soon as they walk around the corner, maybe 10 or 15 away, feet away from you, they may not hear you. And another really important thing is to look for signs of recent bear activity. So if you see bear footprints, uh, footprints on the ground. That's always a good indicator that, that a bear's been around, so we have to be extra careful. Now, the other thing we can look out for is bear scat. Now, this one is kind of black and dried out. These are samples. These are samples they made out of uh, fake rubber, rubber. It's not real bear scat. This one is black. So once bear scat has been exposed to air for about half an hour, it dries up and it looks darker in color. If we look at this one, this one is lighter brown in color. So this would be an indicator that it's fresher. And you can also, um, bear scat will look different. Um, in the spring, it might be a little greener, lots of greenery. In the summer, it might be purple and runny from eating from the bears eating all the berries. And then in the fall, uh, there might be lots of you'll see bits of apple or even bits of the bright, the orange mountain ash berries. So it's really, again, if you see signs of activity, um, like um, footprints and scat, it's likely that there's been a bear around. So, you know, you might have to think about going a different way. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about the difference between black bear and grizzly bears. Again, black bears are not always black and the black bears have these really short, dark, rounded claws. That makes them really good tree climbers. Grizzly bears have the longer, lighter colored claws. So you see the difference between the two. So the grizzly bears are really good diggers. And from digging, they, they have a big hump on their shoulder. But remember that grizzly bears can also climb trees. Now, we often talk about um, grizzly bears being more aggressive or defensive. And there's a reason for that, because they evolved in subalpine habitats. So that's above the trees. So if a grizzly bear feels threatened, it's, it doesn't always have the option of escaping to the forest for shelter. Whereas black bears evolved in forested habitats. So if a black bear feels threatened, they often will go up, um, climb up a tree to escape a threat. So even in town, it's quite common to see sometimes, you know, um, a black bear sow and her cubs up in a tree, just, you know, just uh, going to a safe place. So a couple of things. Um, again, you know, I always tell people, be prepared and expect to encounter bears or any other wildlife anytime, because we live in, in wildlife habitat. So for example, just down the street from where I live in Fernie, there's a moose and a calf, and they've been there for a couple of weeks, and they're probably gonna be there for another two weeks. We've also had bears um, in town, just down the street from our school actually last week, and of course, we've had bear sightings on most of our bike trails. So whether you're walking on a trail on your way to school, you're going out for a hike or a bike ride with your friends, first thing to do, if you see a bear, stop and don't run, just stay calm, and you don't wanna scream. If the bear doesn't see you, just quietly back away and leave the area. Now, the reason we tell people to back away is if you turn around and walk away, you can't see what the bear, what the animal is doing. But if you just stop and stay calm, back away slowly, speak to the animal in a calm voice, it will recognize you um, as human. And you always want to go somewhere safe 
and tell an adult. Now, what about other wild animals? Um, again, if you surprise them at close range, you know, they could um, feel threatened. Now, again, uh, we're gonna talk about um, moose. Uh, we have a lot of moose around in the area. And moose are typically not aggressive animals, but because of their size, if they feel threatened, if you surprise them at close range, they could react defensively. And especially um, a moose cow with her calf. The cows are very defensive of the calves. So if you see a moose, first thing you do, you just stop, you stay calm, you back away <coughs> and leave the area. Um, again, never run and never scream. And um, other animals too, and always, and again, remembering that animals, um, you know, will defend three things. That's their food, their space, and their young. By backing away slowly, you're give, giving the animal the message that you're not a threat. You don't want to harm it. You're just going to calmly back away. Now we're looking at, these are the different animals that we've talked about today. So we've got bears, deer, cougars, skunks coyotes or even raccoons and even rattlesnakes. So we all live in prime wildlife habitat. So it is a very special thing for us and a privilege. So we need to make sure we do everything we can to make sure that the animals stay wild and that we stay safe. Now I'm going to um, pull up a video. The video is three, month, three minutes long and it's, um, it's going to show us, it was taken with um, a trail camera. So a camera that was set up in the wilderness. So it's a great example of some footage of wildlife. So I'm going to um, stop the PowerPoint and I'm going to um, put up my video. Okay, so there's no sound on the video, so I will just let you um, enjoy it.
So if you enjoyed this uh, video, you can go to our website to uh, wildsafebc.com on our um, video vault. And you'll see that we have a whole range of videos. And uh, it was my old uh, provincial coordinator, uh, Frank Ritzy. He's now retired, but he loves spending time in the wilderness and he's got lots of trail cameras set up. So that was uh, some really uh, great footage and it makes us appreciate, uh, you know, what a special um, environment that we live in. So I'm going to go back to the uh, slideshow to finish off. So we saw a lot of these animals uh, in the video. Okay, I think I went to the wrong slide here. Bear with me. Um, I think we were seeing. I think we were seeing the correct slide. It was the one that we had just left off. Oh, on. okay. Ah, so if you yes. go back into presenting the slide. I think we should be good. Okay, can you see the uh, the oath of the wild safe ranger? Um, not yet. Did you um hit share screen? Oh no. Okay. Um, okay, share screen and. Okay, and then if you um, click on play from current, oh, yeah, play from beginning. not from beginning, but from current slide, oh, it'll okay. it'll enlarge the slide you're currently on. Perfect, uh, we got it. Thank you, Christy. <laughs> so for everyone out there, as I said, I, um, this is very new to me, uh, doing presentations on Zoom and using uh, PowerPoint. Um, again, doing wildlife education and being employed by the BC Conservation Foundation. I tend to do most of my presentations in parks or at trailheads or in schoolyards. So um, I usually have um, props with me. We do role play, do different games. So um, this has been um, a pretty steep learning curve for me and I think for everyone else. But um, yeah, thank you for bearing with me as in the grizzly bear and for your support, uh, Christine. So we're gonna wrap up with, um, we talked about what it means to be a wild safe ranger. So basically everyone who's uh, doing the program today, um, you know, you're taking part in the Wild Safe Ranger program. And that means that, you know, you have the knowledge to reduce problems between yourself and any of the wildlife that you may come into contact with. And of course, my role is to educate the community. And there are many, many people. We have lots of family, friends, and visitors, people that come through town and I would really appreciate your help in sharing our message with anyone that is visiting your families, your friends, your neighbors and visitors. So pass this information on to them. And especially, you know, if you're going out for a hike or a bike ride, just make sure that everyone in the group knows what to do if they see a bear. And again, if you've forgotten some of this information, you can go to our website and look under the Wildlife Rangers page. There's a lot of games and information and on the website, uh, there's a lot of information about bears and cougars and all the other animals. So again, as a wild safe ranger, I'm gonna make sure that my family knows how to manage attractants inside and around the home. Again, just keeping up the guard, keeping the garbage indoors, cleaning fruit trees, bringing in bird feeders. I'm always gonna be safe when I'm, on, when, when I'm in the outdoors. And that means I'm gonna make sure I do everything I can to prevent having encounters with wildlife. Um, I need to understand that wild animals need to be wild to survive. I will never feed or interfere with wildlife. And uh, I'm gonna try and learn as much as I can about all the wild animals that live in our province. And uh, finally, I uh, would really like to thank our sponsors. Uh, that's the uh, Ministry of the Environment, the BC Conservation Foundation, Columbia Basin Trust, um, the City of Fernie, uh, District of Belford, District of Sparwood, and the uh, Regional District of the uh, East Kootenai, um, and other some of our other partners. And now, uh, finally, um, it's time to, uh, I'd be happy to answer some questions, if anybody has any questions. 
Yes, um, a couple people want to know um, if you have a favorite animal that 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 you've seen or just a favorite wild animal uh, in our area. Oh, God. I can't believe my battery died. Oh, come on. Oh, um, I think we can st we can still see you, Kath. Oh. Oh, so um, it looks like Kathy's having some technical difficulties. We'll see if she joins us in a moment again. It sounds like maybe her battery ran low, so she'll be um, getting reconnected in a moment. But I'll answer what my favorite um, wild animal is. Um, I, I really like foxes. I find there's something so um, sweet about them personally. And they're kind of, uh, they're not an animal that's easy to spot because they're little and they probably really don't want to be seen by humans. Um, and I think they're also semi nocturnal as well, which means they tend to come out more at night. Um, but I, when I have spotted them, um, it feels like a really rare and special treat. Um, something that I find for animals that I'm really curious to see that they're either you just don't see them a lot or um, maybe they're not a good idea. Like they're not animals that are okay to really watch like if you see them you should probably get yourself somewhere safe is that there's actually lots of interesting ways to watch animals with the magic of the internet um there's trail cams like the one that um wild safe bc has set up that kathy told us about they have lots of trail cams set up on their on their website um and some uh animal like animal enthusiast associations will set up cameras to watch specific things. One of my favorite um, webcams to watch for wildlife is um, there's a whole uh, sort of network of different eagle cams. And so you can watch eagles in their nests because eagles go back to the same nest every year. So a lot of eagle enthusiasts will set up, like there's a way that you can set up cameras when the eagles aren't there so that it doesn't scare them and then they don't know the camera's there. And so it's kind of special. You get to watch eagles raise their young. That's a, like a really interesting type of camera to watch. I think at this time of the year they might be just leaving their nest, but you could check to see um, if you search for eagle cams. They're often a really interesting one to watch because you get to watch eagles raise their young, which feels like a very special thing to be able to see. Um, I'll check to see if there are any other um questions that came through so it looks like kathy is joining us again perfect um hi kathy we we can see you again oh uh, i just can't hear you yet it looks like but it looks like maybe your microphone's on now do you want to say something to see if we can hear you now hello oh perfect we can hear oh, you i am so sorry um no worries I, heard, my favorite. <laughs> I saw a message that the battery was running low i'm like okay it's plugged in and it wasn't like something was loose. So I just, I'm so sorry about that. Well, welcome back. Um, while you were gone, I answered the, I answered the question of what my favorite animal was. And then I also mentioned how there's lots of animals that, you know, either are, they're tricky to see because they're scared of humans and they don't want to be seen by us, or it's maybe not a good idea to be watching them like bears, like you want to be away from bears, that trail cams and, um, and also wildlife cameras that have been set up on purpose to watch specific animals like eagle cams are very fascinating ways to watch nature without disturbing them. Absolutely. Um, but to answer the question, well, my favorite animal is the grizzly bear. Mm -hmm. I think they are amazing animals. And I've also just started work on, on a project a couple of weeks ago um, with, a, with a grizzly bear research project. So what we actually do is we go out um, in grizzly bear habitat and we look for hair samples. So we collect the hair samples and then they are sent to a lab and that is how they determine how many grizzly bears are in the area. And uh, two years ago, we have volunteers that go and collect the samples and out of 4,500 hair samples that were collected at 285 sites or on rub trees, they determined that there were 150 individual grizzly bears. That is in the Elk Valley and uh, uh, Flathead region. So it's one that's very fascinating. And, uh, you know, when you go out in the wilderness and collect the fur samples, when you find, you know, like a sample of hair on the tree, it's like, it just feels like Christmas. It's awesome. Great. Um, another question that came in is what to do if you see a cougar? Um, and cougars are rare um, to spot, but when, but if you find yourself in the situation where you do see a cougar, I can understand why you'd be extra nervous because cougars uh, often, once you see a cougar, it's been watching you for a long time. So people often wonder, what do I do if I see a cougar? Very good question. I forgot to cover that in the webinar. So with cougars, 
remember that cougars are predators. So if you see a cougar, you want to gather your family and your group together. You want to make yourself look large. Stand up on a rock or a log if you can. Use your voice in a loud voice. Stand up to the cougar. And cougar attacks are rare, but they can happen. In the event of an attack, you always, you know, you fight back. And also you can use um, bear spray on, uh, on cougars. But the main thing with cougars, just remember, just stand up to them, gather your group together, speak loudly, and then leave the area if you can. If you're not with an adult, if it's just kids, just make sure you get to a safe place and you tell an adult. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. Um, I also have a question of what kind of animals have you seen um, sort of during your time uh, doing this work? Okay, so I've seen, um, uh, we had some white colored black bears in Elkford a number of years ago, and that was really amazing. We actually had the, uh, the, the mum was black, the sow was black, she had three cups, a black, a brown, and a white one. So I got to see them. And then a few years later, uh, one, one of those cubs also had another set of cubs, and they were two white, two white female siblings. So to see a white colored black bear was really, really amazing. Uh, I've seen quite a few grizzly bears, actually, just last week when we were out um, looking for the grizzly bear hair samples. Uh, we saw the wolf um, on the side of the road on Coal Creek Road. That was my first time seeing a wolf. Um, I also remember a couple of years ago, I also worked for BC Ambulance as a paramedic, and we were driving out uh, behind Baines Lake. We were responding to a call, and we saw something walking across the road. We could see these eyes, and I'm like, that's not a deer. So we slowed down and we stopped, and it was a cougar walking across the road. That was pretty amazing. Um, I also got sprayed by a skunk two years ago. I was working for ambulance um, on call. And uh, so I went to let my dog out and I always, always open the door, make some noise and check, make sure it's safe. And they're fully dressed in my um, paramedic uniform, step out. My dog chased the skunk, got sprayed by the skunk and so did I. So I had to call our dispatcher and tell him, I'm sorry, I can't respond to this call right now. I just got, I'm covered in skunk. So that does happen. We have skunks around. And um, I get to see moose and calves quite a bit. So I've been fortunate. I have seen a lot of animals and it's always a very special experience. That's awesome. Um, I have another question here. Of, have you ever had a wildlife experience where you felt scared? Absolutely. Great question. Um, about 20 years ago, I was out mountain biking in Banff National Park and uh, I had just moved there. So I went out biking uh, in the evening on my own and I came around a blind corner and I surprised a grizzly bear at close range. So I stopped on my bike, held my bike in front of me and the grizzly bear ran towards me and she had two cubs. She turned around in the other direction. That's known as a bluff charge, but it's uh, again, it's normal defensive behavior for a bear defending her cubs. But it was back then that I decided that I should learn more about wildlife and I had the opportunity to volunteer for the bearware program at the time. So yeah, that was uh, definitely got my heart rate up. But now that I've learned a lot more about bears and bear behavior, I know what we can do to prevent encounters and I know what to do to respond. That's great because so often in those situations um, where, bear, where we run into an animal and we feel scared, that's just Sometimes it's because the animal is doing something that seems scary to us, but the more we learn about why they do that, we understand why, and then we can behave in a way that can, you know, calmly remove us for this, from the situation. And especially like with bears charging at us, it seems that we, our instinct would be to run away, but often it's actually just the bear trying to uh, like psych us out. They're trying to be like, well, look, I'm tough. And then they don't really want to mess. They don't really want to get into a situation with us. That's something that I've learned about bears is actually for the most part, bears don't want anything to do with you, but if they feel threatened, they will try to stand up for themselves. But for the most part, bears don't really want to get into anything. They just want to leave. They just want to feel safe. Absolutely. And another thing that bears will do is they'll often stand up on their hind legs. So that makes them look really tall and really big. But the reason they do that is they want to check out their surroundings and also sniff, smell what's around them. 
And I also have, I've often had people say, oh, the bear stood up on its hind legs. It was being aggressive. No, it's just being curious. It's just like when you're a small person and you're at a, at a rock concert, you want to stand up on a chair or sit on your dad's shoulders to get a better view. Well, bears will do the same, stand up on their hind legs to see what's around. Oh, and actually um, another question that, I, that came up that would be interesting to know about is um, why it feels like we see so many more black bears than grizzly bears. Is there a reason for that? Well, we do have a, um, a higher population of black bears in the province. So there's about 140,000 black bears in the province and about 40,000 grizzly bears. But in some areas, there are more grizzlies than black bears. But generally speaking, we have way more black bears. And also a lot of people, we're getting a lot more reports of bear sightings and bear encounters. And people always wonder, was it because there are more bears? Not necessarily. We have more people living, working, and hiking um, in bear country. So that means that, you know, there's more people in bear country. So there's more sightings and more potential conflict. Got it. Um, I think those are um, our questions for today. Um, is there any last thing you want to let us know, Kathy, um, while we wrap up? Um, no, I think, uh, I think that's all. But if people do um, have questions, again, go to our website, wildsafebc.com. It's a great resource. You can also follow us on Facebook. All of our communities have local Facebook pages. So if you live in the Elk Valley, you can follow Wild Safe BC Elk Valley. If you're in Kimberley, Wild Safe BC Kimberley. Uh, many programs, that's a great way to find out about activities, um, wildlife sightings, and if you need to report human wildlife conflict where there's something, an issue, you know, with a bear or a cougar, you know, with people, or bears accessing garbage, you can call the conservation officer hotline. And that number is on our website, but is it's one 952 So that is pretty much um, on our website and on all our brochures. And I did also share out uh, the link to the Wild Safe BC website into the chat um, because you can send messages to us and I can also send messages to all of you. Um, so if you haven't noticed there that, that there yet, um, that's a link that you could click on if you wanted to go look at the Wild Safe BC website. Well, that's great. Well, thank you so much. And oh, I was just curious how many people were on the webinar before the power got cut out. Oh, that's okay. We'll, uh, we'll touch base afterwards, Kathy, but Sounds we'll let good. all of our attendees go for today okay. um, so that they can enjoy the beautiful weather. It's a lovely day here in Creston, so I bet it's probably beautiful in lots of places in the Kootenai. So go outside, enjoy the beautiful sunny weather that we're having, um, and have a wonderful day, everyone. Yes, and thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.